I just wish there was some way to clam my jeans. So. <laughs> yeah. So honeybees primarily communicate within the colony through pheromones and the one that we're most concerned with while we're working bees is alarm pheromone. So whenever we um, open up the colony and start moving frames around and, and move, making a lot of noise within the colony, ordinarily a lot of the guard bees and some of the other worker bees would start to become upset by that and they would release alarm pheromone that's telling everybody else something's going on, someone's breaking into our colony, we need to go ahead and defend our space. And so by putting this smoke in the colony and then using it periodically as they, if they become a little bit agitated, we're able to mask that alarm pheromone. So even though a few bees might think, hey, something's not right, no one else in the colony is able to receive that message from them. So as soon as they can smell and identify a location, they're like, yes, we found it. But. You guys probably won't get stung at all. In the front door, because whenever I crack this lid off, it's going to be loud enough that it would upset people if I didn't. Or bees, I guess, not people, but it might upset you in the long run. But. And so I opened this one yesterday, so it's not going to be quite as good for me to make this point before I crack it. But I mentioned that they use propolis, they use that tree resin that they collect to glue everything down. And so this lid is really stuck down. And I pulled it off since I cracked it open yesterday, it's not quite as glued. But if it's been like a week or two since you've been in it, you can pull this lid and the whole colony will lift up rather than the lid coming off from all that tree resin. So they really stick things down in there. But so when I remove the top board, you know there's a few bees on the top. That's pretty normal. First frame is always the worst too because you have the least amount of room to work with. So this one has a lot of nice nectar on it. And so it's this guy here, but he's going to be hard for most people to see. But he, this is, these two are both with drones. Then there's these skinny little sleek workers here. And then there's these big fat bulbous drones that have these big fly looking eyes that are a lot different looking than the workers. Oh, yeah. yeah, the drones can't sting because the stinger is a modified ovipositor. And mm -hmm. so drones don't have an ovipositor, they're not laying eggs. Well, they are, but they're just not going to do anything to you. So. Yeah, they're just not going to do anything to you. So I'll, she's right here, and she'll come out of that cell in a second. You'll be able to see her long abdomen. And so there she goes. And so you can see all the workers as she moves around. They all turn and look at her, and they touch her with their antennae. And that's part of them recognizing that she's the queen. They sell her queen pheromone, and they actually pick up some of that queen pheromone. Um, since they're research colonies, we usually have fairly high populations because we want to collect them to use on different studies. So the smoke in the beginning is enough smoke to just like for the whole time? Yeah, so they're, they're pretty docile and opening and moving the frames isn't necessarily going to be an issue. If I dropped a frame or did something really loud, like cracking that lid open and popping off a super, both of those are really loud, jarring events. So that's why I use the smoke at that time. But for the most time, most part, they're really pretty forgiving. You can get away with a lot. Um, they get a bad rap because a lot of times people see bees and start panicking and like swatting at them and acting kind of crazy and that's enough to cause them to sting. But a honeybee dies when she stings you so she doesn't have this overwhelming drive just to run around and sting people because there wouldn't be that many bees left in the colony. They really do reserve it for, for, defense, for times of defense when they think it's absolutely necessary for the sake of the colony. So honeybees are eusocial which is the highest level of sociality. Um, 
from the packets, can anyone think of the three defining characteristics of social social insects? Okay. Yes. Overlapping generations. Yeah, we have cooperative brood care, the overlapping um, generations, and then also the um, the caste system, which falls under the division of labor. And so honeybees represent all three of, all three of those things. On the spray that's being passed around with brood on it. You know, we have young larvae, there's probably some eggs on there which are kind of hard to see. We have capped over pupae, and then we have adult bees that are all from the same queen. So we